your career. You're at Gardner Webb now. You were at Western Michigan. So let's talk about what was the decision process to transfer from Gar- to Gardner Webb from Western Michigan. So um, I stayed at Western Michigan for four years. Uh, my first two years, I was it was a lot of special teams. Um, you're still developing, but I was the kind of player where I was like a Swiss Army life. So they literally used me at every position from Sam, Will, and Mike. So uh, it was kind of encouraging to see them trust me with that. But um, one thing I was, I was behind a, a couple of NFL linebackers. So I got the opportunity to really learn a lot behind them. And then um, last year in my junior year, got the opportunity to play a lot more linebackers. So like last year, um, I got to play against Iowa, Mississippi State, um, Ohio against um, the current IU quarterback, like I told you earlier. So um, it was kind of real good. But the thing that kind of was conflict, just kind of like my, I had, it was real rough for me and my D coordinator. Uh, sometimes he would uh, full blown trust me and then play me a lot. And then other times it's kind of like you'd be hesitant. And once I finally started getting in the game, he started playing me, like his whole attitude and demeanor started to change about me. Uh, he became like extremely confident in me. And it was kind of weird because he recruited me. So I don't know why you wouldn't play a player you recruited in the first place, but, and then be surprised when they do well on their end. So um, just that, and then my D coordinator, he ends up becoming the D line coach at Michigan. And my head coach ends up getting fired. And right now he's an offensive coordinator at Iowa. So those two coaching changes um, kind of just led me just to enter the transfer portal and just try to get a fresh new start, just kind of believing in myself and taking a big step. And I know it's, it's kind of sometimes it's hard in the transfer portal not knowing what you're going to get, but I kind of trusted the player I was, uh, trusted the knowledge and the character I had. And just knowing that I did good at Western Michigan. So a lot of the coaches, they were vouching for me. It, they did kind of hurt losing me. So um, it was just kind of – it was a good experience. I met a lot of good guys. Like I said, I played with a lot of NFL players there. That's one of the main reasons that I committed there. Uh, so I just was got the opportunity to learn a lot, um, play behind a lot of good guys, and then um, take my talents – to where I'm at now and just kind of bring some of my skill and some of the culture that came with me to this new school and just kind of be the veteran, be the, be the veteran guy. So, And what was like, you talked about like the veteran. coaches and things like that. And then entering the transfer portal, mm-hmm. like how, how did, cause you said he didn't, he didn't trust you and he did like, how, how did you, like when did that whole thing start between like there was a specific game or a specific practice where it kind of just triggered? Uh, so it was kind of like my full class recruiting class. So as you know, like you and me, a class of 2020. So our recruiting class, he kind of had just, I don't know if it was a grudge against my full, whole class, but he played me and like two other guys for on defense out of my whole class. And a lot of those guys ended up having to transfer, but, it just kind of like um, where like a younger guy like me, like I'll make one mistake during practice. It'd be extremely hard or he'll hold that against you for days, but an older guy would make the same mistake. And it's almost like, oh, it's okay. Like you're human, like uh, just next play. So it really kind of starts to make you into a robotic type player where to where like you're not trying to mess up. You're trying to and do it takes the joy out of it, right. I'm sure of, right? Yeah, it takes the joy out of it. And then it also makes you play robotic and it doesn't allow you to play free. And once you don't not allow to play free, you start worrying about you making mistakes rather than making a play. So it kind of puts you in a, a prisoner mindset to where like, if I, if I may mess up, I know he's about to take me out. Um, or I know he's about to bad mouth you rather than you just saying, let me just play me. Let me be the same player I've always been. Let me just go out and make some plays. So, uh it was definitely kind of like over the years, like as you've seen, I just don't make mistakes. I was playing multiple positions. I had to have a deep conversation with him, just kind of asking him, like kind of contradicting for you to have me playing three positions, but kind of hard for you to play me in a game. So 
Um, obviously, once I got my opportunity, I got the opportunity to start in some games. So I obviously was making some plays. And then you could just see how kind of their attitude changed. And then it also just opens me up as a player to where, like, I didn't care if I made a mistake because I just know that's going to happen. Like, you're not going to make every right. single There's tackle. no such thing as perfection. It's impossible. Exactly. Like, you're going exactly. to you're gonna mess up at some point. And, I, yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I, that seems to be a, a pretty big theme with depending on where you're at. Some coaches mm-hmm. are a little bit more strict on mistakes. Some aren't. But, I mean, that's – that's a part of it. And defenses are going to get scored on. I mean, you guys don't want that to happen, but it exactly. almost happens every game. So like someone's going to mess up and it's, I feel like it's okay to do that. And yeah, that's, you don't want the, when the game starts to not become fun, that's just when you start to becoming unengaged. You, you, you're not, you don't really care about exactly. what you're trying to do it's on the field. Like right. Exactly. And it shouldn't, I mean, it is a job, but like, it shouldn't, but yeah. Feel like it's, that. it's still football. Like that's still the game I love when I was young. Right. And, and it also messes with the player mentally on top of when you have stuff going on outside of football. So you just feel like the whole world against you sometimes. And for some athletes, it's really hard to break out of, including myself. Like it really is a lot of anxiety. It's a lot of pressure on you as a man and as a brother and as a son. Like at the end of the day, you still have a family you're trying to make them proud. And, um, they your family might not know exactly what's going on like the full details of how it is to be a college football player or, or a college athlete and also you know, I think these coaches sometimes don't realize how much impact they can have on the athlete's mental health and also just the way they love the game they started playing when they were young right I mean it all starts because you're a little kid and you you see a ball and you just want to exactly. you know have fun you play. Yeah. <laughs> it's it starts pretty simple but w- w- when you came to Gardner Webb what was your expectations going in uh I just knew it was going to be open expectations obviously like there was so many new players that came in on top of with a head coach so it was a, r- a real risk to take just putting my trust in a full new coach and um also just new players so um, as I could see the talent around me, it was not like I expected us to lose, but um, I had very high hopes. Uh, obviously, I know I was a big part of the team, so it's really like this is stuff I can control. Like I can control the destiny of the team, even though it was 22 players um, or 11 on defense, 11 on offense that can control the game. But just trying to know you can influence 22 players that play on offense and defense that um, now you can really kind of stray the, the control the destiny of the team based on your mentality and your own leadership. So kind of came in there with good expectations. Um, it hasn't all been good. Like, you know, there's pros and cons to every school, every situation, but for the most part, I have really good expectations coming to the school. And how did, uh, them winning back-to-back conference championships affect your decision to go there? Um, once I heard that, it was kind of very impressive to me. I did kind of help me when I'm going to come here, even though it's like, it wasn't my team that went back-to-back, but it's kind of good coming to a winning culture. Our head coach, he came from a Division two school, uh, Tiffin, where um, they went undefeated back-to-back, so uh, it made it kind of more comfortable coming with a winning coach uh, who had a coach of winning at his old program. And I kind of know, like, obviously, this is first head coach a job at an FBS program, I mean, FCS Division One. So, um, obviously, you can't run it exactly the same. The competition is going to be a little bit better. So, I know it wasn't going to be, like, undefeated or anything, but um, it kind of makes you a little more comfortable coming with a coach who's used to winning. Yeah, talk to me, baby. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me nice. I'm from another world, baby, yeah. Broadway paradise. They think I'm way too cold, cause I put my-